let's get let's get into this conversation. Um, looking forward to the future. Four future technologies that you're excited about. This is something that everybody needs to listen to yeah. because everybody. Oh, this is the famous question: What's next? What's mm-hmm. next? You always talk about Microsoft. You always talk about da 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 da. What's next? What's the next industries? What's the next technology? What's the next companies? So, four groundbreaking technologies that will change the world in the next decade. So number one, uh, biogenetic chips for uh, gene editing to be able to cure cancer and other illnesses. So opposed to testing on animals and going through this long life cycle of, of testing on animals and getting skewed data, they will be able to make chips and do the testing with those biogenetic chips to understand in advance. And even you can even skew down and go based on race of like sickle cell to be able to eliminate that, that is going to be a huge um, player and going to be a huge technology. The oh, reason oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let, let's let's get back to that for a minute. Because you, you, you said that a little quick, and I, I want everybody to understand. Ian's a very smart guy. Uh, who, Brand, you just said that, right? What? You was like, Ian knows it. He knows it. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't passed the ball, but I know a little bit. <laughs> he was like, yo, Ian knows, Ian knows everything. He said, ain't no sports and rap and stocks. <laughs> So, yeah, man, I, I, I want to make sure that everybody grasps that. So biochips, genetic testing, is this are these microchips that are being implanted in people's body? Like, what does that mean? What is what does that mean? What is uh, it, it, it's a tech, testing mechanism for, for scientists and pharma companies to be able to like think of it as like um, test trading or paper trading. Technically, like so before you actually run out and do run a holy trinity and do 10 trades i need you to practice before so they can take this data and run them across a bunch of demographics and understand if you will if that uh therapy cycle or if that drug will be able to work before they go test it out because like if you test it in rats or let's say you scale up and test with chimpanzees although most companies are not supposed to it doesn't mean that the data that you have once it's implemented into humans is going to be exact and that's why the cycle for getting the FDA approval is so long. With biogenetic chips, they'll be able to test in advance and know within probably a 3% range of accuracy if that treatment will be able to work for humans. So that should be like 2040, 2043, somewhere in that area one that's really popular. Biotech. And he's giving us a year. Yeah, you have it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, number two. Yeah, number two is brain computer interfaces. So any of you that are familiar with Stephen Hawking, he had a, I wouldn't say primitive, but it's not as advanced as as it will be in the next 20 years. Um, So you will be able to have implants into your brains to be able to control some things, some technology. So if you are disabled or even at scale, um, you'll be able to control things with your mind. I know it sounds like sci-fi, but if you guys go to Google, if you research Scientific American, Harvard Business Review, you'll be able to see in the areas in which they're working in that space, which I think is pretty damn fascinating. And I, I told Stock Club today, like once you go down the science rabbit hole to see what they're developing, if you want to feel like you don't know anything, dig down this hole for a couple of hours and you like the advancements that are there are incredible. We just have not um, hit the peak of technology. Now, for context, before we get any new technological wave, please write this down. Every new era of technology was ushered in by a new power force. So we need we would need like new water reactors or uh, lighter or dense like lighter storage capability for a new power source, and then we will see a new wave. So like once water became a big thing, then technology was ushered in. Then when oil and fossil fuels came in, we had another technological wave. So we're in between. Even with this, go look at the Binner cycle and extend them out fifty to hundred years. That will give you a pattern to know when the next power source and then no it, it is not solar it is not wind because politically they are fighting that like tooth and nail um to be able to block that from happening i want to keep us on youtube and not get not upset the politics. <laughs> um <Yeah. laughs> n- number three if, if you read money master the game um organ and bone creation with scalable 3d printing so at some point they will be able to recreate a pancreas recreate a kidney in the 2040s and 2050s, hopefully, like skin grafting will be a lot smoother. Um, there's been a lot of testing there, and it's, there's some politics behind that. So even like there's a company that if you took a pill once a day, it would destroy all the bad bacteria in 
your mouth. And then a lot of dentists wanted it, but because of red tape, it wasn't pushed through. So a lot of these technologies are available. They work in small scales, but it's the politics and the red tape behind it that stops it from happening. And the last one is DNV. I want you guys to write this down. So these are nano technology batteries that could last for years at a time. Um, it's incredibly fascinating. Um, but like, imagine if you had, let's say, a pacemaker and instead of going back to getting your checkups, like the pacemaker in it because of the battery and it will last 25 or 30 years. Um, but like I said, we need a new power source that is powerful enough to usher in a new technological wave before any of these will come into effect. These are not sci-fi. I did not get these off of the dark web. These are things in real <laughs> companies that are actually um, trying to bring these technologies forward, but that, you know, people have to be ready for them. And then also they have to lobby enough for these to become a reality. But when I was doing my reading for the past couple of weeks, I thought this was incredibly fascinating. And this is why I think, my my i don't know this to be true but i think apple's next wave will be in healthcare because when you have a trusted brand and they already have all of our biometric data in their system anyway i don't think the car thing the apple car is about the consumer side i think it's about the commercial side because like think of, think of the hospital experience who loves to go to the doctor or hospital i think if they build that car and they cater it to emts and there's a better infrastructure there in the healthcare space, they could usher in all these other technologies. So what if like you had a gunshot victim on the South side of Chicago and an Apple ambulance comes to pick you up and they already have the kidney reprinted inside of there and with doctors on staff to do the surgery on the way to the hospital. I don't think Humana is going to do that. I don't think Pfizer would do that. I think Apple would. That's why having that war chest is so important. And you guys like, I want something new. The company with the biggest bag, the biggest war chest is going to destroy all the smaller companies. Mm -hmm. So, and Apple and Microsoft gives a, a small dividend, but if they get into the health, healthcare space, I think it'll be bigger. Yeah, real quick, when you said, uh, uh, when you're talking about the nano uh, battery technology, you said a new power source. We're talking something outside of like lithium and alkaline. What, what, do, we, what do you mean by a, a new, okay, a new a power source? It'll be different. It'll be new. Um, and it may be a combination of things and factor, but the storage facilities that we would need to be able to store the technology um, is not there yet. We're getting close. Just like the same way, like a terabyte of data back in 99 when I was on Napster illegally downloading cannabis album <laughs> <laughs> would have cost $9,000 probably, right? That's when Buckingham <laughs> Palace like five days ago. Um, but now a terabyte Buckingham Palace. is like 200 bucks. So imagine in, in 10 years, what this, like we may be able to get 50 terabytes. Brandon, this will make you happy because you'd be able to shoot two movies <laughs> and edit easily, right? You may be able to get 20 to 50 terabytes of data and a external hard drive for like 300 bucks in 15 years because the costs keep going down. So as we are able to store better, that's when the new technological age will start to come in and be ushered in. So I know, I know but here in... You want me to go down my little conspiracy rabbit hole? Or you want to stay clean? Yeah, yeah. He's just, just do don't talk about vaccinations. Please, I'm please, not gonna say please, anything please, about please, that. Please, please, please. And I said, I said this to Stock Club, and, and I'll, I'll keep it really short. You guys keep asking about genetic editing and sequencing, so I, I just play a doctor on YouTube. MCAT destroyed my life, but my first love after rapping basketball was being a science. Like my, my dad calls me doc because because I want to be a doctor, right? When you guys are saying that you want genetic editing, there's a good side and a bad side to it, as there is to any industry and any business. The part that is great is that, let's say if you have a degenerative disease that could affect your family, great, that could be eradicated. Also, you have to consider what gene editing and when it comes to us, you could technically edit a gene sequence for a family to make them intellectually inferior to then build a underclass that fulfills certain tasks so that the 1% now becomes the top half of 1% in entire history. So you have to be very mindful when you're wanting these technologies, because like you can use nuclear power for a good source and then there's a bad source that you can use it for. So be mindful when you guys are like, hey, I want all this genetic editing. That's great. But what if it doesn't go in our favor? And historically, any editing of history or gene cycles have not worked in our favor. 
So please be mindful of that, that there are two sides to that coin when we get to playing God and editing uh, some of these things in our uh, sequences, so. Very clean. There you have it. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>